you've got to make a decision, not by the preponderance of the evidence, the greater weight of credible evidence, like the judge said here. In a criminal case, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. I have such a high burden in a criminal case, it's got to be something huge. 75, 25. But that's not the case in a civil case. In a civil case, not a criminal case, you can have 49% doubt and still vote for the plaintiff. I am stunned. And I am more than mildly offended that they would suggest this is CSI. Now, if they want to do the TV thing, that's fine. But it's not CSI. Tell them to change the channel. The show that applies to this case is Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Except instead of Desperate Housewives, we'll call it Desperate Executives. And instead of starring these five lovely women, it's starring Ray Gil Martin. It's starring uh, David Anstis. It's starring Briggs Morrison, Elise Rayson, and Ed Skolnick. And instead of being set in suburbia, New Jersey, it's set in the Merck headquarters in New Jersey. So you want to let's watch some Desperate Housewives together? Let's start with episode number one, Shoot for the Moon. And I launched into the first point. I had four episodes, four points in my clothes. The first one was Shoot for the Moon, how the goal was behind this drug and blah, blah, blah. At the end of each episode, I'd say, well, that is the end of that episode. Let's pause now for a commercial break. And I would play an actual Vioxx commercial. And in that Vioxx commercial, as I was playing it, I'd say, now listen to the warning because there never was one. And after each commercial, I'd come back and say, well, let's follow the next episode. And we went through all four. Um, we won. Um, that is, if I've got any war stories worth telling you, that's at least a smattering. I always leave a few in case, like, third year law years, I get to come back or something for some seminar class. But uh, that gives you an idea of why what you're studying is important. You take what you've got, you use your ingenuity, you use your creativity, you use every tool you've got, use your friends, use your family, use everything to figure out how to help people get something done. We, in the last five months, changed the web search bar for Yahoo. Literally changed it. We went to see the Yahoo lawyers and we convinced them that they were subliminally advertising, whether they knew it or not, for cigarettes, by the way their web search bar was. And that if they didn't change it, I was going to bring the most horrible suit they'd ever seen. And they have physically changed it. What you do can make the world a better place. And so I applaud you for being here. You wouldn't be here if you weren't brilliant, wonderful people. But I urge you to keep your balance on who you are and learn this stuff and then go out there and do something good with it because you really can. It's, it's a neat thing. John's asked me to save time for question and answers. You all may just want to like head out, but I do have, what well, we have 14 minutes left. Should anybody want to ask any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Yes. Were you ever concerned that with these um, very stylized like things you were doing that the judge or that the court might not appreciate it? Well, in a way, you do have to, what's your name? Karen. Karen. Karen, in a way, you do have to be careful because there, there are lines. For example, in that first PowerPoint when I said things changed because Bob Ernst died, originally I had a chalk drawing of him disappeared like you'd have at a crime scene, and the judge said that was over the line. I couldn't use that, and so I changed it to this blah, black line instead of the orange chalk that would look really cool. Um, I've had judges sometimes say I can't use certain things. What would generally happen with Merck, like what happened with the desperate executives, is the judge said, okay, here's the deal. Y'all can show each other your PowerPoints before you go, and we'll take objections, or y'all can make objections as you go along and not show it. Well, since Merck was going first, and they didn't want me to know they were using CSI, they said, well, we don't want to show it. That just gives Mr. Lanier a chance to, to respond to ours. And I said, oh, that's fine. I don't need to show it. And after it was over, they were convinced I had a spy in their camp. And so they started trying to ferret through to figure out who the leak was when I just had read their stuff and knew what was coming. And I'm sitting there, and if they hadn't done it, I'd have changed my PowerPoint before I got up while I'm listening to them. But, but uh, generally, judges are just as bored as most jurors. And they are so ready for someone to wake them up. 
So you figure out where the lines are and you play within those lines and you don't have any trouble. Before PowerPoint, I can remember trying traffic accidents when I was at Fulbright and Jaworski and I'd get model cars and get on the floor and put the tape out for the lanes of, you know, and here comes the cop car and I'd pull it out of my back pocket. You know, I, I mean, you know, so uh, judges are bored. They love, I've, I've popped water balloons in court. I've, uh, I've challenged uh, jurors to, uh, or, or witnesses to drink jars of benzene laced water because they were swearing all up and down it was safe. And I, you know, I'm fine here. I, it's certified by Rice University. You're certified by Rice University to have the same amount of benzene in it, 10,000 times the legal limit. Drink it. The expert, I ain't gonna drink it. Um, you know, sometimes the objections are made and they're sustained, but I don't live in fear of it. If they sustain it, then they sustain it. And that's fine, I'll keep going. But, but go for it. Use the front door and go for it. And this should be exciting stuff in the courtroom. What else? Yes, ma'am, your name, please. My name's Heather. All right, Heather. I'm just curious, I know this isn't your favorite kind of law, but what happens on appeal in a lot of your cases? Um, well, it depends, Heather. The, the appeals in Texas, the plaintiffs lose 87 to 95 percent of the time. It's very, very political. And uh, um, uh, um, that's an unfortunate part. The first case, for example, the $493 million case that we talked about in here, we settled that one on appeal before it even got filed. The appeal got filed. The same was true. Uh, no, the Carborundum case we settled after the appeal had shortly been filed. But while it was on appeal, the judge set the next 21 for trial. And I said, I'm trying them against Carborundum. And they said, no mas, uh, uh, no more. And, and so we settled those. The Merck case uh, has gone up on appeal. The 14th Court of Appeals is the jurisdictional court in Texas that oversees it. There was a three-judge panel that rendered a verdict against me saying that there was no proof that Vioxx causes the heart condition, the heart attack. Um, I'm absolutely convinced the court, and I'm on record, they probably hate my guts and will probably kill me if they ever see me, but I'm absolutely convinced they didn't read the record. It's, it's apparent, it's so readily apparent by the opinion and by the fact that they did not, I mean, that the timing of it, there's no way they read an eight week record in that amount of time. They issued the opinion two days after uh, 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 post-argument briefs were filed. You just can't, you, they, they didn't read it, okay? And so um, I filed my paperwork on that accordingly and the entire court has said that they want briefing on it on banc. So the whole court's now considering it uh, uh, out of concern that that three judge panel did not do what's right. What will happen to that, I don't know. Um, but I do recognize that plaintiffs have a very hard road to hoe in Texas. Uh, the New Jersey Court of Appeals has done good with our verdicts. Um, uh, they haven't sustained them all, um, but, but they're okay. Uh, when I put it all in the balance, uh, my appellate record is a little better than 50-50, which is amazing when you consider uh, uh, what we have there. I've never gotten anything reversed on any of this kind of stuff, though. If it gets reversed, it gets reversed on, on uh, a legal point or sufficiency of the evidence type point, which, you know, it's just uh, politics is deeply involved on the appellate level in the state of Texas, deeply involved. And you actually vote for judges based on are you a Republican or a Democrat. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. Anything else?